Okay guys, how's it going? So, I think this may well be the cheapest route to cinematic footage uh, you can imagine. It really is. It's a, a great new lens. Now, forgive me if I pronounce this wrong. I think it's Siroi, Siri, Siroi, S-I-R-U-I, Siroi, Siri. Anyway, something like that. And it's an anamorphic lens uh, for micro thirds. And this is a 50 millimeter F 1.8 and it's a 1.33 uh, stretch or squash or whatever you want to call it. Um, now the GH5 has, uh, you know, the full um, anamorphic kind of support. So you could put a two times on there. And to be honest with you, if I could get the same uh, a lens, an anamorphic lens for a sort of similar money that was two times, I would go for that over this just because, you know, you get more of a, more of the anam anamorphic effect. But I've been really, really, really happy with this. Uh, for the money, it's just amazing. Now, this is my first anamorphic lens, but I have actually done a lot of research and I've probably put bids on anamorphic setups, anamorphic lenses on eBay like about 20 times or something. And just they've just they've gone for more than what I was willing to spend. So I didn't end up get, getting them. Uh, so this is my first sort of dabble, my first dipping my toe into the world of anamorphic. And I've been really, really happy with it. I've been playing around with it for two days now uh, and it's it's a joy to use. It's just like it's just easy it's really really easy and it, it has the um it has that effect it has that sort of slight i know the, the the word is overused but it has that cinematic kind of feel about it um you've got a d squeeze on the monitor within the gh5 so it's really easy to to set up your framing and all that kind of thing uh the focus is super super smooth it's got quite a long uh focus um so it's obviously clearly set up for a follow focus you know with gear and all that kind of thing which i will get around to getting a, a gear wheel for it at some point, but so far I've just been doing it by hand. And it's quite a long throw, which is obviously ideal for cinematics, but it's quite long if you're doing it by hand, if you're treating it like a photography lens, basically. Uh, the aperture is the same as well. It's clickless and it's very, very smooth. So if you want to change uh, exposure when you're sort of panning or something like that, you can you know, rack the, the aperture and it's very, very smooth, very sort of graceful. It's all metal and it feels solid. It's, it's quite weighty for a lens, for a, you know, a GH5 micro four thirds lens, but compared to anamorphic lenses, it's actually very light and very small. So it's highly practical. You've got, uh, is it a 67 millimeter thread? I think it's a 67 millimeter thread on the front. So it's really easy to whack your NDs on. Uh, and it's just an absolute joy to use. It really is. And I, I it's, it's really sharp. You've got no problem shooting at f1.8. Uh, it seems to be perfectly sharp. The the focus at infinity is exactly where I want it. If you if you stick it to f1.8 and stick it to infinity, it is pretty much bang on. Like I found, it's a tiny tiny hair sharper if you just focus a tiny bit back again. But that's kind of ideal really because you don't want if there's any sort of tolerance issues on your your camera or the mount or anything like that you kind of want a little bit of wiggle room at infinity and this one's just got a tiny amount of wiggle room at infinity if you put it to like f f 5.6 and whack it to infinity it's bang on bag on perfect but if you put it at f 1.8 you feel like you, you tend to have to back off just a tiny amount which is like i say is perfect it just gives you a little bit of breathing room for tolerances and all that kind of thing um, and yeah, I've just been absolutely, absolutely really enjoyed using it over the last couple of days. Here's a bunch of random shots. You can make your own mind up. Um, I'll stick on some uh, lens flare uh, tests at the end as well, because, you know, a lot of people that are buying these kind of lenses are really keen on lens flares. Um, it does have quite a pronounced uh, blue lens flare. I've heard a couple of people remark that their flares were not perfectly parallel and not perfectly straight, and they've had to un take the, the lens apart, take the screws out and then readjust it and then tighten it back up again. Mine seems to be bang on straight. Uh, so that, that is unfortunate that some of them have that issue, but you know, it's fairly easy to fix. Um, and it's, you know, considering the price of the lens, I think it seems like a really, really good quality product. That's just that one little niggle that if you order this one, check that your, your focus, uh, sorry, your flares are dead straight. Cause obviously if they're not straight, then everything's going to be slightly distorting in all different ways. Um, so yeah, so I'll stop waffling on. Here's some footage and yeah, I've just been really, really happy with this, this uh, lens so far. I have ordered a uh, E-mount to Micro Four Thirds adapter. Obviously it's only got a small uh, image window coming off the back of the lens. It won't cover a uh, full frame, but I can mount it on my Sony. Apparently I'll put some notes down below if that changes, but I should be able to put an adapter on it and then mount it on my uh, Sony E-mount. 
and then put my A7 III in APS-C mode, which it should cover uh, perfectly. So that will give me some better sort of like low light options because I love the GH5, but it's let's face it, it's not a low light camera. But anyway, there you guys. Like I say, this could be some of the best money you're ever going to spend when it comes to getting cinematic footage out of your, your camera. Um, there's an E-mount version. Uh, I went for the Micro Four Thirds. There's Micro Four Thirds, and I think there's, is there a PL? There's one other mount as well. I'll put it on the screen, but yeah, there's one other mount type. Um, but yeah, honestly, I would give this a nine out of 10 recommendation so far. It's a joy to use, easy to use, and for the money, it, it's fantastic. It's sharp, it's fast, and it's anamorphic. So, you know, you really can't complain. Anyway, guys, I hope that's useful. Catch you later. Okay, so here's a test for how close you can get to this lens. Uh, this is at closest focus, which is about 85 uh, millimeters. And it, this is the, uh, the full 16 by nine um, image off the GH5 sensor. Uh, GH5 does have the XE crop as well, the XE sensor crop in 4K. So let's have a look at that as well. But yeah, this is how close you can get um, with Micro Four Thirds with this lens. Let's have a look at the crop. Okay, so here we are with the um, the XE crop on. Uh, so yeah, it's not a macro lens. You can't get super super tight, um, but you can get, a, a, I guess, an extreme close up. I guess you'd call it. You just it's no good for like products or um, you know really really getting in on an eyeball or something like that. But you can get relatively uh, close. Just looking at the monitor there, trying to make sure I'm still in focus. That right. There you go. There you go. That's an idea of how close you can get. And remember, this is with the XE sensor crop on the GH5. Okay. Okay, so let's quickly test the uh, the flares. Um, now I've heard a few people say that the the flare lines are not perfectly straight on their sample. Um, I've only been doing some quick tests, but so far mine looks okay. Uh, I think you can fix it. You've just got to like unscrew a few screws and take the lens apart slightly, and then realign it and then screw it back up. It's a little bit unfortunate if that's the case, but I think. Mine looks good. I'll just put down the flare down to the edge of frame. Does that look dead straight? I think it's okay. I will double check it in the uh, the monitor when I get a chance. So yeah, so if you've got like a light just off camera or just in shot um, and it's sort of like eye level with your talent, that might be roughly the kind of flare that might be going on. Obviously it depends on source, the light source, how bright it is and how dark the room is. Um, this is just an iPhone, which is a reasonably bright light, but uh, you know, it's not like a sunlight or anything. But yeah, so that gives you an idea of what the lens flares look like. Fairly blue and fairly noticeable, but you kind of have to, you know, be shooting at night or, you know, there's only certain types of shots where they're really going to show up, but when they do show up, they are quite noticeable. So that's either a like it or hate it thing. But anyway, that's an idea of what the lens flares look like. I could do this all day long. <laughs> there you go.